Okay, so in this video, we're going to go and look at some of the formulae and functions uh, and give you a basic overview of how these work within Excel. So all I'm going to do is open up Excel and you can see here that I've already entered a series of four numbers into cells A1 to D1. Now, if you remember back to the previous video, one of the ways that we could add these numbers up would be to say equals, which tells Excel that I'm going to be using a formula. And I can click A1 plus B1 plus C1 plus D1. Press return. So that gives me the sum of all of these values. If I click in cell E1, it brings up the formulae. And what I'd like to do now is to convert that plus sign into an asterisk, which means to multiply. Now, if we look at that, what we think might happen is we're going to say 2 plus 3 multiplied by 5 plus 1, which should, in theory, give us a value of 26. But if we press the formulae, it actually gives us a value of 18. So what's going on there? Well, to understand that, we need to look at one of the principles of mass called bod mass. And what this means is, is that brackets are done first, then order, so if you're raising something to the power, for example, 2 here, then division, then multiplication, then addition, and then subtraction. So if we go back to our original data, we can look at the formulae, and what we'd actually have is that B1, which is 3, is multiplied by 5, giving us 15. To that, we add 2 which is 17, and to that we add 1, which gives us 18. Now we can manipulate this formula, so if we actually wanted to get a value of 26, what we could do is to put brackets around the first part of this equation. And what's happening now is that the brackets are being done first, so you can see A1 plus B1, so we're getting 5 multiplied by 5 it would give us 25 and add 1 would give us 26. We could change this again and get a different answer for a third time if we put brackets around the second part of this equation. I'm going to change that by clicking the tick sign here and that will give us a value of 30. So in this case we're actually getting 2 plus 3 equals 5 multiplied by a sum of 5 plus 1, which is 6. So we got 5 multiplied by 6, which gives us 30. So it's important that you understand the way that formulae need to be constructed within Excel in order to try and get the output that you're actually looking for. So if we now look at summation, so if we want to add up all of these values, so I'm just going to get rid of that formulae. I just want to add up all of these values. Now we've already looked at the first way where we can say equals A1 plus B1 plus C1 plus D1, press return, gives us a value of 11. But Excel has got some functions built into it which allow us to make this a lot quicker. So instead of having to do that for all four of those values, and I'm sure you can appreciate if we had a lot more values that would actually get very time consuming. Instead, what we can do is to say equals, so again, telling Excel that we're going to use a function, and this time I'm going to use the function called sum. And sum stands for summation, which basically means to add together. And you can see here that one of my most recently used functions is sum. So if I double click on that, it will bring up this prompt here, which tells me that I need to have the numbers inserted. So what I can do, is I can click and drag across the range of numbers. So this is putting A1 to D1 into my function. I close the brackets, hit return, and it gives me the number 11. There is one final way which is even quicker. What we can do is we can just highlight the range of values that we want to sum. And if we go up to this function here and click auto sum, and it will give us the value of 11. And if I click into that cell, 
you can see in the function bar that I actually have the equation sum a1 colon d1, which is the equation for summing all of those values. I can do the same thing with averages. So again, if I wanted to average these values, I highlight a1 to d1, and this time, instead of clicking sum, I click average. And what that's doing is dividing 11 by 4, because we've got four values, and that gives 2.75. So this time it's put in the formula average, which is a1 colon d1. To do that manually, you could also write equals, telling Excel it's using a function. Start typing in average, and as you can see, average pops up. Double click it and highlight the range that you want, just as we did with the sum. Close the brackets, hit return, and we get the same value. Now one thing that can be quite useful if you've got a large spreadsheet it's not obvious from these data which is a value that's been input and which is a formulae. So what you can do is go up to the formulae tab up here and click on show formulae. And what this will do is show you which cell has got a formulae in and which is data that you've entered manually. Just don't forget to turn that off again when you've finished because otherwise you won't be able to see the values of your calculations. The final thing I'm going to show you in this video is something called fill handles. Now, if I wanted to replicate a series of numbers down, I can simply do that by putting one and two in. Now, if you see here in this bottom right hand corner, there's a little black square. And if I hover over it, my cursor turns to a plus. If I were to pull that value down, Unfortunately, Excel isn't smart enough to realize I wanted to add one each time. So what it would do is to copy that value down across all of those cells. However, if I undo that and I actually highlight both of these cells and then hover over the fill bar, and now when I pull it down, you can see that it's actually replicating with an addition of one each time. So that's a shortcut if you need to put in a lot of data where you've got a regular interval. So this has just been a brief overview of some of the ways that you can start using Excel to do calculations with your formulae and also with functions. In the next video, we'll actually look at how we can apply this to some scientific data.